Hey everybody, it's that time of the week again. Time for you man people. We are coming to you live from the Jim Alberti Theater in Austin, Texas, where we are keeping it weird. Because as Paul McCartney said, I used to think doing anything was weird. Then I discovered anyone not doing anything was weird. It was all people saying it was weird. That was weird. That's weird. Here, here. Time for your fun Texas fact. Texas has served as the capital of Texas. I'm sorry, seven sites have served as the capital of Texas. Washington on the Brazos, Harrisburg, Galveston, Valesco, Columbia, and Sam Houston moved the capital to Houston in 1837. In 1839, the capital was moved by his political rival, Sidney Lamar, because he didn't want the town of Austin, he didn't want the, the capital city to be called Houston. Talk about vindictive. <laughs> here, here, pull up a chair. Show me some love. Everybody say hi to Rachel. Rachel's working props for you. Hi, everybody. Show me some love. And if you like this video, make sure you share it. If you would like to support me or this broadcast, you can do so at paypal.com. The Bald Chandler. Venmo, The Chris Chandler Show. And to be a continuing supporter, which I need, Patreon, The Chris Chandler Show. You guys up for a story? Everybody say hi to Rachel. She's working props, working hard for you over there. And running the audio and everything. Oh my, before we get this started, I want to make a little announcement that Paul Benoit is coming into Austin, Texas tomorrow. We are going to do some local shows. We are going to play in San Marcos. We are going to play in Houston. We are going to play in Austin proper. And we're going to play in the town of Albert, Texas, which is out there near, uh, near uh, Carterville. And I'm going to have to get out of the frame here to do something in order. Is you guys up for a story? You guys up for a story? Maybe you can do that. You see see there on the bottom right corner, there's a little play button. Oh, she sticks in my sign, which got twisted around by the by all the shenanigans going on there. Anyway, you know what that says. Are you guys up for a story? Type it out on the keyboard. Say, tell us a story, Chandler. We showed up just this week to hear your story, and I want to hear it. Let's see. I'm going to have to come out of the frame here. Right there. There we go. Well, I am going to tell you a story. And don't forget, after I tell you the story, you can hang around. Rachel, you can hang around for your, no, no, no. You can hang around for your moment of spin. <laughs> I'm just throwing things around. Hang around for your moment of spin. Think of your numbers. Next week, we're going to have a very special moment of spin. It's not going to be a number between one and three. It's going to be a number between one and four. So here's your story, because it's an anniversary. Paradise lost, but perhaps not the way that you're thinking. I, I wrote this story four years ago when it happened, just before the pandemic, when I was living in Oakland. And we, we were just starting to wear our N95 masks, but for a very different reason. And as we walked the streets of San Francisco, Oakland, Sacramento, Berkeley, complaining for the first time that the elastic bands on those masks just fit too tightly, but then remembering the lives that had been more severely impacted than our own. Loss of life, loss of family, loss of home, loss of community, big picture stuff. But every big picture is composed of many smaller ones. Smaller ones that depict lives impacted in ways that we don't even think of, can't even think of, even though it is the smaller picture that depicts the greater reality. The littlest bird sings the prettiest song. In Paradise, California, before the fire, 
Like in any community, everyday dramas were being played out on a routine Sunday morning sidewalk basis. You know what pisses me off is that they do the trash pickups on Monday and almost every month has a Monday holiday. Veterans Day, no trash pickup. What's up with that? Do you think they'll ever fix those potholes? Hey, did you hear that Paradise Adventist Academy had advanced to the Northern Cali California semifinals? Paradise Adventist? Really? Do they even have a football team? Volleyball. Girls volleyball. Before the fire, these were the buzzes of the front porch morning coffee neighborhood chit-chat. The stories on the local AM radio station. The front pages of the local newspaper, the Paradise Post, which is now in ashes. And although in ashes, the Paradise Post, through the help of her sister paper, the Chico Enterprise Record, continued to publish as they had before the fire. Only now, there is no town to deliver the papers to. So they delivered the papers to the evacuation centers. For we all know what happened over a two-day period. What started as a small brush fire well west of town swelled into a bonfire that turned paradise into Hades in a matter of hours. Potholes and volleyball were no longer on anyone's mind. Grab your family and escape, escape. Escape. But not all of the pre-fire drama of Paradise's refused to die community was turning into floating ash that settled onto your car windshield in Berkeley. There are 12 players on the Paradise Adventist Academy girls varsity volleyball squad. Go Cougars! And they and their families made it out alive. Barely. But eight of them and their families had lost their homes, lost everything, and they were spread out, staying in shelters or with relatives from Shasta to Stockton. How could there be a volleyball game? But this is the semifinals, and no sport in the school's long history had ever made it that far, and their opponent, the Forest Lake Lady Falcons, assumed the team would have to forfeit. And the Falcons began preparing for their next opponent. Cougars. The Cougars refused to be defeated. Yet the Cougars had no equipment, no uniforms, no place to play, no place to practice, no homes. But these girls, now that's a different story. And I thank God on Thanksgiving Day that they don't see things like you and me. Never underestimate the power of young women. These girls took to social media, and they let it be known that they needed this game to go on. And in solidarity, the Lady Falcons agreed to host. And the Lady Cougars, their lives in total chaos, arranged for transportation from points unknown to Auburn, California, home of the Forest Lake Christian School. And these 12 girls met in a parking lot for the first time since the fire. One of them had managed to obtain 12 white t-shirts from a shelter. Another had a sharpie, and together they scrawled cougars on their shirts. And together they linked arms, united, defiant. And together they marched into the opposing team's gym, where they were met with something that few visiting teams receive when they walk into an opposing team's home. They were met with a standing ovation. And they were met with much more, because within 24 hours of the devastating fire, the Lake Park Falcons had collected donations of $1,600 and laid out on the visiting bench were new knee pads, socks, and most impressively, new uniforms. Each one matched with the player's number and name on the back matched perfectly with what they would have worn had the fire not happened. And my friends, the Paradise Lady Cougars went on to win that game against the Forest Lake Falcons. They won the game, but not the match. But in truth, they won much more than any volleyball squad could, including being the champions of my heart. Including being the champions of my heart. And it would be poetic to say that the Lady Cougars went on to win the state championship. And in a way they did. But instead, sorry for the pun. 
paradise lost. They had to because, my friends, this is not Hollywood. This is paradise. This has been your Poem of the Week. Stick around for your moment of spin. Go ahead and think of a number. Think of a number between one and three. Do we have any takers over there, Rachel? Just a lot of applause. A lot of applause. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. The applause was deafening. <laughs> Hey, Marcy, number two, the only number between one and three, and that would be observations from a roadside diner. Now give me a number between one and 135. Kathy Gould, how you doing? One of my favorite poets in Texas. 67 it is. So that's 87. Freedom is losing a contest, shaking the hands of the winner, looking straight in the eyes and saying, no hard feelings. Freedom is having hard feelings. And freedom is taking those hard feelings, tying them to a stick so they can be used as a hammer to build a cathedral from the one for the one that made you feel that way. This has been another Poem of the Week. Talk to me in the comments. Talk to me about what happened a week or so ago when a whole bunch of people showed up all at once. And then the next day for Thanksgiving, not so much. This week, I don't know, but talk to me in the comments. This has been your Poem of the Week, and my friends, we have been listening to Pete Weiss and the Weistronauts.